Chris, how you doing? Very well. How are you, Coach? Good. Good. I can hear you fine. I see okay. you can hear your face, so. I sure oh. can. All right. The floor is yours. Okay, certainly, uh, first of all, just want to welcome everybody and, um, you know, just uh, talk a little bit about our bowl prep and then also uh, the biggest thing today is signing day. So uh, hit that and then I'll turn it over to our director of recruiting, Tara Barnes, and he'll be able to give you more in-depth uh, probably information about our recruits. So just cover those two things. Um, certainly, uh, since we've got back from Indianapolis, uh, our guys have been really pretty much entrenched with their academics. We're in finals right now. So we're trying to give these guys some space. Uh, it was a long season, uh, you know, a hard season. I think it was really important our guys get a chance to bounce back and, and uh, recharge a little bit, not only physically, but also emotionally. So trying to be a little bit mindful of that. Uh, really, we'll wait until we uh, get through this week. We've worked lightly a couple times, but we'll wait till we get through this week and then, uh, you know, start working in earnest for the bowl preparation as we go along. And one, one message I just wanted to get a, across to our football team was that, you know, we won 10 games this year. We're only one of 10 teams in the history of the program to do that, so they can really be proud of that. And we still have another opportunity uh, to become only one of five teams to win more than 10. So those two things are certainly significant in themselves. Uh, but more importantly, it's just a, a great opportunity to play in a tremendous bowl game against a really good opponent, tough opponent from the SEC. So that in itself is really exciting. And uh, when we do start uh, getting ready, uh, Football-wise, you know, that'll be first and foremost in our minds. So look forward to that. Uh, just on, on a side note, you know, we've had a couple of player uh, departures. Uh, a couple of guys have decided to enter the transfer portal. And then uh, one player uh, has decided to forego his uh, last game, and, or at least this uh, last game this season, and another year of eligibility and play in the NFL. So, uh, you know, certainly, you know, it's just a sign of the times. I think you know, everybody's kind of experiencing some of these things, and we certainly have over the years. And, uh, you know, the bottom line is we just wish all of our guys nothing but the best moving forward in whatever uh, path they choose to take. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll just continue to uh, push forward in that regard. Uh, in terms of recruiting, you know, I think uh, really things don't change an awful lot overall. Our approach uh, historically has been to try to get to know the prospects as well as we can, get to know their families, talk to coaches, uh, teachers, counselors, you know, people in the schools and gain as much knowledge is possible uh, about each and every prospect just to see if, uh, you know, we, we really believe they're going to be a good fit in our program. And then uh, it's a two-way street. We certainly want them to come come to campus and have an opportunity to uh, do the same with us, really get to know us better, get to know the people on campus better, and most importantly, talk and visit with our players just to get a feel of the program. And I think uh, this past year was a little bit interesting. Uh, certainly different than a year ago. Uh, at least all of our prospects have been able, the prospects signed, have been able to be here on campus, uh, all but one, I should say, for official visits. Uh, but they've all been on campus. They've had a chance to investigate and learn more about the program. So that's been helpful. And uh, thank goodness that, that uh, opened up back in June. And we also, in turn, have uh, had an opportunity to get out and get in schools, uh, maybe not as much in a normal year, uh, since really we were just uh, out last week, but gave us a chance to be in some homes, uh, visit with people and, and learn more about the prospects. And we feel you know, really good about the class. There's, there's uh, no question about that. Uh, again, our, our biggest asset continues to be when prospects come to Iowa City, uh, be it you know, to go to a game in Kinnick, uh, but more, most importantly, I think just to experience Iowa, experience what it's gonna be like to go to school here, be a part of the program, uh, meet with the academic, uh, uh, experts in their given areas of uh, interest. Also meet with the counselors, uh, Liz Tovar, her staff, uh, meet with other people on campus and those, you know, obviously the coaches, coaching staff, and uh, most importantly, I think be hosted by our players and spend a lot of time with our players uh, just so they can get a feel of the program. So uh, I really feel fortunate that's been able to take place. Again, feel really good about the class. And, um, you know, the bottom line is this, you know, to be a college football player and to play in our program, it takes a lot of hard work. It takes real uh, serious commitment. And uh, I really feel like uh, each and every one of the 17 guys that we signed today understands what it is we're looking for. And I think they, they fully uh, embrace that that challenge and uh, are looking forward to getting here just like we are. So, you know, it's uh, certainly exciting. It's always exciting to add to your football team, um, you know, and, uh, you know, so we feel really good about the group and just want to compliment our staff, the support staff, all, all the work everybody's done, uh, complement the efforts of our players. 
And this is pretty much year round because prospects come year round, at least in a normal year, and that began in June. So our guys have, you know, given up a lot of their own time to, to spend time with the prospects, and that's that's a huge part of recruiting. So we're really appreciative of that as well. Um, so all that being said, we're just uh, really excited to have these guys join us. Excited to have their families be part of the program. And uh, with that, I'll throw it out for questions, and then Tara Barnes will come and uh, you know just help fill in some blanks for you. But I'll throw it out for questions. Thank you, Coach. The first question this afternoon is from Tom Caker. Hey, Kirk. Uh, good afternoon. Hope you're doing well. Hi, Tom. Yeah. And um, wanted to ask you about Xavier Wampa, five-star kid, um, about that process of getting him. And then that, uh, that visit with him, uh, you know, that, I think it was last Monday where you were in, in home and how he kind of blurted out that he was coming to Iowa and, and what that moment was like for you. Well, that, that moment was pretty good, as you might well imagine. Um, so the process itself was long. You know, we, we've uh, identified Xavier a long, long time ago. And it doesn't take much, uh, you know, much investigation. He just, he's one of those players that really jumps out at you on film, jumps out at you. Uh, I wasn't at the, uh, the Prairie game. I saw the first half, had to go back and join our team that night. It turns out he won, you know, blocks a winning field goal. You know, really good players have a knack of doing that. And that seemed to be uh, part of his DNA. Uh, but the other other part about Xavier, I think that's so impressive is just kind of young man he is. He's just a really impressive young person, uh, very humble, um, you know, and just uh, really excited about his his mental makeup and uh, just excited to have him join us. Great family. They're a really supportive family. And, uh, you know, it's been fun to get to know them. And it was kind of a long, long process. I don't know if anybody could have predicted uh, a couple of months ago what was going to happen. But last Monday night was a real highlight for us just to uh, – have him uh, accidentally, I think, uh, tell us that he was going to become a Hawkeye. It was early in the evening, which made the evening uh, a really good evening. So uh, it took a lot of, uh, you know, just took a lot of pressure off our shoulders and made it made it really an enjoyable evening. The next question, Coach, is from John Steppy. <laughs> Hi, Kirk. How are you? Good, John. How about yourself? I'm good. Thank you. Speaking of Xavier, how helpful has it been since he's committed to be recruiting? Who's joking with Tyler Barnes about coming for his job on Twitter today? <laughs> well, I didn't hear about that, but um, as you might imagine. Uh, but no, we're just thrilled to have Xavier uh, join our program, first and foremost, as a player and a representative of the university. That's going to be great. And then uh, yeah, if he wants to take on some side jobs on the side, I'm all for it. Uh, and, and I do mention, you know, our players are the ones who sell the university. They sell the program. So I think uh, Xavier's already helped do that with some of the current class that we signed, and uh, he'll continue to do that in the future, and that's that's super. I'm just uh, really excited about that. The next question, Coach, is from Kennington Smith. Hey, Coach, appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. Um, My pleasure. We had several commits just today alone, um, some flips, some outright commits. What do you attribute the late success um, that kind of builds up to getting so many commits in in one day. And what is that experience like as a coaching staff, um, you know, maybe having to reserve spots or all that kind of goes into that process? First and foremost, I think we just try to try to be patient. We move at a, a pace that we think is smart. And, um, you know, ultimately, uh, you know, we, when we offer prospects, we, we try to run the race with them, see what uh, where it's going to take us. And, you know, at some point you find out, you know, you're, you're doing well with the prospects. Sometimes you're not. Um, and, and then as you move forward, you just make adjustments. But um, yeah, a couple of the guys that committed or you know, announced today, we, we knew about that maybe a little bit earlier uh, in the process. But um, bottom line is, yeah, that we, we uh, really, really do believe we're on the full race. So there were guys, uh, several guys that we signed. Uh, Cohen's a good example. Entringer, who's, you know, it was more of a soccer player. Actually, it's kind of an interesting story. Uh, spent a lot of his time uh, as a child growing up in Arizona. Uh, was a really good soccer player and just kind of is new to football the last couple of years, two years, I guess he's played football and uh, has, has learned it real quickly and done very, very well at it. So he's, he's a guy that to me is a late developer. He's got a world of potential. He's already a good football player. Um, and, you know, so we just kind of ran the entire race with him and looked at his film from this year and just were extremely impressed. Uh, Orlando Trader is probably another example, uh, was a, a Mac uh, commit. And, uh, you know, we watched him hard during his senior year, knowing that corner is a position of need for us. And, um, you know, that thing worked out. T.J. Hall is committed to another school, and uh, there was a little turbulence in that program. So we stuck with him. We happened to have a connection to T.J. His dad played for Don Patterson. 
uh, who knows an awful lot about the, the Iowa football program. Needless to say, his dad played for him at Western Illinois. So we had a little bit of a connection there, a little tie-in, and, uh, you know, that worked out really well. So, you know, it's just, uh, it's just a matter of, I think, you know, for us, we just try to uh, be as thorough as we can with evaluation, try to take our time, not make rash decisions. And if, if we're not sure, we try not to, to make a decision that, you know, uh, as a four-year commitment. So we just try to be prudent, smart, and, um, you know, run the entire race with the prospects. The next question, Coach, is from Scott Dockerman. Yeah, Kirk, how you doing? It sounds like Thanks, you Scott. got your annu annual December cold, unfortunately. But uh, yeah. that, that sounds a lot worse than it feels. I feel fine. Okay. Yeah. okay. I know you, you, in the past you haven't really wanted to do the in-season visits just simply because you're trying to juggle pr game preparation yeah. with a visit. However, when you look at the Penn State game in particular, three guys that came for visits, all three ended up, uh, and they're all highly touted prospects, all all committed to you, plus you have a lot of future guys that have that potential as well. Uh, have you changed your mind at all on that based on what we just saw, or is it still just kind of developing with the times, I guess? Uh, yeah, I mean, not really. I, I think in a perfect world, and, and I can think of two of the guys that you're referring to, you know, Xavier came for his official visit that weekend, uh, but he, you know, and he's, he's an interesting guy because he's been, been on campus anyway. He's been here for games. So it wasn't new to him, but, uh, you know, the environment that day was absolutely fantastic. But he's also been on campus to do all the academic uh, stuff, and he, he knows some of our players on, on our current roster, so that helped us as well. Uh, the one thing I think you, you when, when a player comes during, and TJ Hall is a good example, he came on his official visit for that, that weekend. Um, what you miss out on is, you know, they don't get as much time with our players because our players are sequestered on Friday night. That happened to be a game that <clears throat> went late, so... You know, Saturday night's kind of short, and it just kind of it cuts into the time they get with um, our players first and foremost, but also uh, just being with a group of recruits. I think, you know, that, that adds to the chemistry sometimes with, the, with a group. So uh, still in a perfect scenario for us, it would be players get, get to come here unofficially for, for several games in Kinnick, so they get the feel of the atmosphere, and then, you know, come on an official visit where, where there's a lot of time, a lot of space, and they get – I think a little bit more thorough picture of the program. And um, that, that to me is still the ideal word. But when you talk about prospects from outlying areas like California, like Florida, uh, and Jazz is an example of that, then it, it gets a little different that way. The next question, Coach, is from John Schaefer. Kirk, uh, not only did you land Xavier, but you also land the number two prospect in the state with Aaron Graves. And I, um, what is Iowa that has and really landing the best recruits out of this state, you think? Well, first of all, you know, it's a tale of two cities there because, you know, Xavier ran the entire race, um, you know, 10 days before signing, before we knew what he was thinking. You know, we, we knew we were in the race. Uh, I'm not sure, so sure where we were six months ago, quite frankly. And, uh, but, you know, obviously as it went on, I think, you know, we, we knew we were a finalist. We weren't sure until 10 days ago what, what he was thinking. Uh, then conversely, you know, Aaron was an easy sell. Aaron wanted to become a Hawkeye. Yeah, and that was a real easy one and happened really early. I don't know that we've offered anybody younger than Aaron. And uh, gosh, is he an impressive young man. So we're thrilled he's, he's joining our program. But you know, we're, we're going to try to do our best each and every year uh, to recruit the state as well as we can. Um, you know, and if there's a player we feel like it's, is going to fit really well in our program, we're going to try as hard as we can to recruit them and convince them this is the best place for them. But all, all that being said, there's still a lot of competition and uh, it's never easy. You know, rarely easy. I shouldn't say never, but rarely easy. Coach, the next question is from Chad Leistico. <clears throat> Hi, Coach. Hey, Chad. Uh, good to see you. Uh, as you. you know, the recruiting uh, isn't done with the portal situation, uh, roster movement all over the place. It, it, but you've never taken anyone at quarterback. It, was that something you would consider in this cycle with so many names there? And in general, just with the portal is so full right now, what is your approach? Uh, aggression, I guess, aggression level at, at positions of need. Yeah, you know, you never say never. Um, I was just telling somebody the story about Brad Banks uh, over the weekend. Uh, you know, when Brad came here, we were looking to get a, a high school quarterback, and, and uh, that was our goal, try to build with, you know, somebody who's going to be here for a longer period than a year or two years. So in a perfect world, I think that's how you want to build your roster in, you know, just in uh, general, general circumstances. Uh, as all of us know, at least everybody on this call knows, the, the world of college football is changing really rapidly. 
Uh, players are going to depart, and they are departing right now at a record pace. And, uh, you know, they may be joining at a record pace, too. But I, I think our approach to the uh, portal is going to be the same as it's been with uh, prospects. We're going to try to be thorough, make sure we're, you know, identifying the right things. And, uh, you know, ultimately, it's like a, a prospect. You want to get somebody who's going to come, come to your campus and really maximize their experience and be here to run the entire race. That's the goal. Uh, it doesn't always work out that way. So, you know, we'll, we'll continue to evaluate our roster. We'll continue to evaluate what, what is available. And uh, if there are players out there that we think can help our program either immediately or maybe long term, uh, we'll consider that. And as I, I think about the pro portal, I think about guys like Zach Van Valkenburg. I think about guys like Jack Keflin. Uh, and I don't know what the market was for either of those guys. I think about guys like uh, Makai Sargent. And I can tell you what the market was for him uh, a couple of Aprils ago uh, or June, Mays, whatever it was. But uh, all three of those guys really end up being good players in our program. And uh, both Makai and Jack, you know, made NFL rosters. Makai is the captain for us. Uh, both have made NFL rosters this past year. Or so that, that's probably more the, uh, you know, the prospect we're looking at. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll you know, entertain any uh, possibilities. And if we feel like they're going to help our roster, we'll, you know, we'll consider anything. Coach, the next question is from Tom Kaker. Kirk, you're a bit prophetic back in late June when you talked about talked to us before the, the big visit weekend and you kind of tempered the expectations a little bit. Um, how, how challenging is it to kind of stay patient when things don't go well or as well as you'd hoped in a situation like that and, and kind of run this race, if you will, borrowing from your own terminology? Uh, you know, a couple of things. So, you know, a year ago it was, it was unusual because – whatever the number was, three or four prospects, five, I can't remember, ended up signing with us, you know, never, never got here for the official visit. We never got to, you know, meet them face to face because of the pandemic. Th this year is a little bit different, um, you know, because things opened up in June. But if you think about it over the course of the recruiting period, most of those prospects didn't have a, other local guys didn't have a chance to get here from the start of the pandemic on. So, a huge component of recruiting for us is getting prospects here in Iowa City and getting them here on, on multiple occasions. So I, I think it was realistic uh, back in June to, th to think that maybe things were uh, going to be a little you know, slower than normal, uh, whatever normal is anymore. And, and the bottom line, again, is just to, to make sure we're getting guys that we really feel good about, uh, not only in terms of their athletic potential, but their um, ability to you know, really fit in our program and work uh, in, in a way that's going to you know, benefit everybody. So, you know, I think uh, you know, it's like anything. If you're not sure, just don't make a move. And uh, we want to be patient, continue to learn about guys. I think all of us were confident, too, that there would be, be good stories that would emerge. Guys like Orlando, guys like Cohen uh, that had their best football still in front of them, well, well in front of them. And, uh, you know, it just panned out that way. It really worked out to our advantage, I think. And uh, T.J. Hall's another example. Um, you know, he was committed and all, all that back in, in June, I believe, to another school. And uh, the longer it went, it just kind of worked out in our favor. So uh, and I, I, I firmly believe there's probably a couple players out there right now that we're not aware of that probably could help our program. And you know, we'll try to do our due diligence and see if there's anything we're missing. And uh, then, you know, push forward after that. Coach, we'll take just a couple more. The first sure. one from John Steppy. What impact did COVID have as you were recruiting many of these kids while that was still going on? You know, we, we made the best of it. Uh, you know, Zoom was a huge uh, component of what we did and remains, you know, uh, helpful, but it's not the major part anymore. Dur during the pandemic, we had no chance uh, to do anything other than Zoom, whether it was uh, visits, virtual visits, you know, facilities, all those kinds of things. And and that, that's a heck of a lot better than it was 30 years ago, but it, it's still not the same as, as getting in front of people and really getting a feel for the personalities of the people involved. And, um, you know, so there's no substitute for that. I don't care what business you're in. I, I certainly know in education, uh, in coaching, you know, you, you got to be with the people you're working with. And it's the same way in recruiting. So uh, ultimately, again, that that's our best chance is when a prospect comes to campus several times and really gets to know the feel of things. And, and again, I'm not pretending or you know, suggesting that every kid comes here and falls in love with it. You know, sometimes it's just the opposite, but that, that's healthy. That's good uh, because that's, that's what recruiting is all about. Each prospect figuring out what it is they want. And then, then uh, you know, eventually ended up at the school that's going to best meet the, the things they think are important. The next question from Mike Loss. Erica, getting back to the transfer portal, you've 
mentioned, I mean, you, you've hardly lost anybody compared to the national average, I would guess. A very prominent national coach today said that the transfer portal has caused total chaos, that there's tampering galore, there are no consequences, adults are manipulating young men. Have you found any of that to be true? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah all of the above, for sure. And it, it's really sad. I, 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 my understanding, I'm, I'm just a novice at this stuff. Uh, and the portal is kind of like NIL. I think we're just on the front end right now. We really don't understand the uh, total ramifications that are going to result here. But, yeah, there's no question. And, uh, you know, one thing I have seen uh, over the years, there's more and more adults with bad intentions or at least, uh, you know, I'll say it, they they got bad intentions, uh, you know, dealing with young people and influencing them uh, in a way that maybe – uh, it, it's really no different than going to a, a little league game uh, where parents are just, you know, kind of misguided on what what they think is important. And, um, you know, it's still about when you're competing, it's about the, the camaraderie, the teamwork, trying to do your best, trying to do your best as a team, at least in our sport. And, uh, you know, that's all you can ask anybody to do. And I think, you know, when it comes to college athletics, I think it's still important to come get a degree. Uh, we had six of our former play- players here last Thursday night uh, visit with our seniors and juniors, and each and every one of them to a man said that. Just the value of getting their degree, not necessarily that they're going to use that degree in their chosen field of, uh, uh, of, of their professional lives, but just the value of getting that degree. And these are six guys from uh, different age ranges and all, all different backgrounds, all uh, sharing that information with our players. That's still a huge component of the college experience. And, uh, you know, hopefully you have a really good career in the meantime, and if you can Take it beyond that, that's great. And if you can benefit from NIL, that's great. Um, you know, all those things are good, but there's still something about, you know, signing up and running the entire race and, you know, sticking with it. I think that's, you know, it's part of the sport. But but all that being said, too, I'll go back to the original point. One thing I learned 23 years ago, actually, uh, when I got to Maine, uh, you know, in 1990, you can't make everybody happy. And certainly in a program, not everybody's going to be happy. Not every player is going to be happy on the team. It's just unrealistic. So that, that, that's reality. And uh, in that regard, it's probably good when players have the freedom to leave. But I just, uh, I, you just hope a guy, a guy leaves for the right reasons. He's not leaving too early. And, and somebody with bad intentions you know, might be influencing him. You hope that's not the case. I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't say bad intentions either. Maybe self-centered intentions for that adult. That's, sometimes that happens. Coach, the final question this afternoon is from Scott Dockerman. Yeah, Kirk, one, just one question about about quarterback now. Right? About the, at the midpoint from the championship game to the bowl, have you uh, have you made a decision as far as who's going to start, or is that still in flux at this point? Yeah, this may shock you. I've not looked at one play of Kentucky yet, and uh, I think we've been on the field, let me think, three times maybe. Um, I think I'm correct in that saying. All right, yeah. I think we've been on there three times for about an hour with our, our older guys. So, I mean, we're not even remotely close to thinking about that right now. We're just trying to keep our guys moving a little bit, let them sweat, uh, no contact, get them on the field, off the field, and we'll, we'll start preparing uh, next week. And, uh, you know, our, our attention as coaches has been on recruiting, uh, you know, getting our guys warmed up. We had a big recruiting weekend this past weekend, and, you know, we'll really start thinking about football here uh, as these finals wind down. And, you know, we, we certainly – uh, are not going to win or lose a bowl game at this point just because of what we've been doing. Uh, we got more time. I was telling the staff today, I can remember last time we went down there, uh, I think we probably went down nine days before the game. I had not seen a stitch of film on LSU because back then the recruiting rules had us traveling right up almost till departure. So it was just like a madhouse. And, um, you know, my fear right now is we'll probably have too many ideas up on the board next week because we still have time to get going. But no, I mean, personnel stuff, we'll just see who's healthy, who's, uh, who practices well here in the next couple of weeks, and we'll go with the uh, best, best guys to give us a chance to win this game. It's going to be a tough game, but we look forward to that. So, Thanks. Okay. All right, I'll, Coach. I'll, Thanks I'll, for your time. I'll close it down, and uh, Tyra Barnes, our director of recruiting, will take it over from here. Thanks, guys.